Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to be um, doing a bit of making and repair on a TomTom sat-nav bracket. So uh, this is the piece that normally fits on the back of the TomTom, which I'll show you later. And there's several things broken. You can see there's a stump snapped off, uh, which is fitted to this piece normally, one way or the other. And that piece normally has, a, uh, basically that turns to tighten the suction pad up. But the suction pad piece is also uh, broken and lost. So somehow we need to make a windscreen mount for this piece so it can be mounted in the car again. So the way I'm going to do that is by using one of these, which is um, another normal sucker mount. This is actually one for a mobile phone that's got um, that's got the plate on. And that piece just fits in there one way or the other. So that would normally be mounted like that. So what I need to do is make a piece that couples to this and also fits to this. So basically I'm going to make a piece that's got this shaped hole in and also has a ball on. So we need to remove the ball from here um, and then we can make the replacement piece. Right, so uh, this ball helpfully comes out of here. Just need to undo the screws and then we can measure the size of it. There we go. Make sure I've got both screws. And we can just measure that with uh, one of these things. So it looks like it's about uh, 16 millimeters in diameter. So we just need to make a plastic ball and a plate like this fixed together, and that will be it. So I'm using Autodesk 123D Design for this, which is free software you can download from Autodesk website, specifically um, software they've specifically made for people making. So. The output file it does basically is an STL file, which is a stereolithography file, which is specifically designed for layered building of things like 3D printing and so on. So I guess the first thing we need to do is lay down a sphere with a radius of 16 millimeters. There we go, that was easy. And then we just need to measure the other piece. And uh, just cut that special shape, shaped slot in the middle um, and attach it to the ball. So I've used the basic shapes, a sphere, um, a cylinder and um, another box to make the basic shapes and we just need to cut this slot out. So I've already used, it, used the uh, split solid function Cut that piece out. I just need to do that one. So we need to split that using that sketch. And we can cut that out. So a little bit of a uh, thing I need to clean up there, but essentially it's the right shape. And now we can do lots of nice things like bevel the corners or make them nice and round. So. So see what that looks like. Just do that to all of the corners. There we go. So that's pretty much it for the design of the piece. And now we need to slice it up and 3D print it. So now I'm using a piece of software called Slicer with a three instead of an E, which is open source software for slicing up models. I've exported an STL file from AutoCAD and I'm now going to import that into Slicer. So I've got it just here. And that's what it's gonna look like on the print surface. And then we've got lots of settings. So I've actually got a config file for the printer, um, which is this one, which is a 0.4mm layer height and a half mil nozzle. 
We'll see how that goes before we try and do it finer. I can go down to a 0.25mm nozzle and a 0.1mm layer height. But basically this is a mechanical part, so the finish isn't too important. But we'll do um, a print like this anyway and see how that works out. So um, I can position this thing on the print surface how I want. And I can also add more of them if I want to make two at once and so on. Uh, we've got various print settings, so there's the layer height. Um, various other settings. Infill will leave quite heavy at 0 0.8, so that's 80% filled in. Um, there's not that much to fill in, so we'll use the line pattern. You can change that to honeycomb and all sorts of things. Um, speed will leave at the default. And we can also add support material, so the sphere part of it, obviously at the bottom of the sphere, the sphere there's quite a big overhang. So we can say if the overhang is more than 45% and basically build in support material which is like scaffolding that holds it out and then you cut it out later. I'm going to try and do it without that to start with because the sphere is on a cylinder so it's maybe not so bad. And if that fails then we'll come back and put support material in. So <clears throat> let's see. Yep, I think we'll just try the default settings, which is uh, 90 millimeters a second print speed. Um, we've got other options for things like multiple extruders, which my printer doesn't have, and so on. But I think that's going to be pretty good. So then we just do export G code. And that'll sit there crunching the numbers away, generating perimeters. It's only a small piece. So that's finished, then we should have the G-code. So now we can move that um, to print run, which is what controls the printer, and we can print the piece. Okay, so here's the 3D printer. This is a Lulzbot AO101, which is based on a RepRap Mendelmax design. Um, there's actually another video in my channel, which is all about this printer. So if you want to look at that, basically for the details, or well, if you go to xrobots.co.uk slash 3D with an uppercase D, there's pictures and words and all sorts of information. So, first of all, we need to prepare the print. So the software we're using here is called Print Run. Which is also open source and gives us control over the printer. So we can, um, you know, move the parts around. You can hear it moving there. And we can also set the temperature for the extruders and monitor them so we can see there the heater, the actual extruder is up to 230, so it says 229 degrees, and the heated bed is at 105 degrees centigrade, which is quite hot. And that's so the print stick. We're printing in ABS plastic. Um, so if we just take a quick look at the extruder, which is there, and I hit the test extrude button should be able to see extruding plastic so we can check it's working Just get rid of that and if I click on the print button in fact first I need to open the file bring in there probably can't see but basically it's saying it's got 62 layers and it's going to take 11 minutes so let's kick that off the printer should home and then it should start printing that's homing X and Y and now it's homing the Z axis off it goes. So it lays down a skirt first of all, which shows you the um, area it's going to print inside. You can also make that higher to stop drafts. And now hopefully we can see it laying down the contour of the piece. The focus is a bit tricky because it's constantly moving. Um, So you can see the, there again, that's better, the, the plate of the piece and then it's um, left that sort of T-slot in there 
and basically that's going to continue building up in layers. Okay, so it's done the base, which should be about 3 mil thick, which as far as I can tell is uh, how thick the pieces we're replacing. And now you can see it building up the cylinder on there. It should be about 10 mil high, so that'll take a few minutes. And then it should print the ball on the end. So all the time the print run software is reporting in real time on the obviously the temperature and so on, but also the, the dot you can see just here is the current layer so as, as that dot will get bigger as it moves up and um, at the bottom we've got a kind of status that says it's 40% printed so the ball is going to be a very interesting piece to see it print okay so it's starting to print the sphere I can see it wobbling as the next layer is being put on there is a setting for um, cooling time between layers so you can let the previous layer cool a bit before you print the next one which I probably should have enabled so you can see that wobbling as it's printing but um, it's not looking too bad but we'll see how this goes as a test um, and otherwise we can obviously the beauty of this is you can go back change a couple of settings and see how that prints okay so almost there I've got a feeling that the stick it's on is a bit high and it might snap um, but anyway we'll do this one as a test and then we can go back and refine it so when the print finishes then it cools the bed down to 60 degrees so the plastic uh, goes a bit harder and then we can just remove it from the print bed. Alright so here's version 1, it's actually pretty tough, it's made of ABS which is what Lego is made from. Um, yep that's not too bad, the only problem is of course it's slightly too small for this. So it fits in there fine but it's quite loose and wobbly and we want it to be tight so I need to go back and make that uh, that ball slightly bigger and as you can see there's quite a big distance there so we can make that slightly smaller and the other issue is it doesn't actually fit on here, that piece fits on but it won't slide down as it should do like this and that's because the base is too thick so I need to go and make that slightly thinner so that it fits on so let's do a version 2 okay so I've made the stick piece slightly smaller and I've also made this uh, 0.7 millimeters thinner so we'll go and re-slice that and reprint it and we'll see how that looks so here's the second version being printed you can see it's printing this piece a lot slower this time I've set it to print um, to spend at least 20 seconds on each layer and um, to go down as slow as five millimeters a second to achieve that so hopefully the sphere and the stick are going to be a bit better this time so here we are with both the versions that's one that's version two i also made the ball slightly bigger which i forgot to mention um, unfortunately it's slightly too big now um, it, it pretty much fits but i can't quite get those two pieces together um, so basically I'm just going to sand the ball smaller rather than um, try and make a minutely smaller one. The sphere hasn't printed great anyway due to the overhangs, um, so I'm just going to sand that off. However it does fit on this piece fine. That's quite a nice, a nice fit. So I'll just clean that ball up and we'll put it all back together. Right, so that's an incredibly tight fit now. Obviously it was a ball and socket you could move. Oh, you can still move it slightly. But being as it's on a flexible arm, that's not so important. As long as it stays in there. So that's the ring that mounts on the... mounts on the tom-tom. -tom. And then that piece... now clips on there incredibly snugly as well. So... Should be able to mount that on the windscreen and um, we're all good to go so let's reunite it with the sat nav all right so here's the tom tom and the brackets let's just put the two back together there we go seems pretty good i don't think that will fall out of there so that can sucker on the dashboard uh, on the windscreen and that can rest on the dashboard 
and obviously that sticks bendy so it can be posed however we need.